Good afternoon. Uh, hope you are all able to join me. Um, welcome to the refresher training for assessors 2017, the CII Award for PCC. Uh, just one second. The program objectives for today is that uh, after providing you with a brief of the award statistics, with the new models that we have introduced this year, along with what we have added in the checklists, we will also discuss what all should be focused on in the feedback report. To help you write the feedback report, we have you know, provided a two-sheeter, which is basically a ready reckoner on how to incorporate the result parameters in the feedback report findings. Also, um, how to what kind of communication we make in the opening and closing meeting. And uh, we will also discuss the side visit, how exactly you plan for it, what all do you, you know, expect, what kind of email communications do you expect from us, how do you set up the side visit date, and of course the executive summaries. <clears throat> I want to begin by first thanking you CII Award Assessors for your tremendous contribution to this unique award which is based on the maturity system. You would be very happy to know, I think most of you already know by now, that last year we had the Global the Codex Chairperson, Mrs. Avilo Parney, who had come down from Geneva to give away the awards. She uh, went through, she actually uh, went through the whole award process for about two hours uh, with me personally to find out exactly how this award program takes place and then she found this to be, you know, befitting um, of a Global Codex Chairperson, you know, to be giving away this award. Uh, very happy to say that last year, besides Mrs. Avilo Parney, we had Ash, uh, Sri Ashish Bahuguna, the chairperson of FSSCI, as well as Mrs. Anuradha Prashad, the joint secretary of Ministry of Food Processing Industries, give away the awards. Now, uh, there are uh, quite a few benefits that we have started, you know, to pass on to our practicing award assessors. Last year, we have been able to provide select nominations, you know, by us to QCI as recommended NABCB consultants. And we are aware that some of you have been successfully inducted uh, and taken in as impaneled as NABCB consultants. We have also been able to provide you with the opportunity of, you know, impanel, impaneling you as face faculty. We have provided opportunity to present to some of you, you know, in, that is, in the CII programs and events on case studies and best practices you know, followed in your organizations. We have also proposed select nominations to FSSAI as technical panel experts and national resource persons of FOSTAC. FOSTAC is the new initiative of FSSAI on food safety training and certificate. So, uh, of course, the final decision was with FSSAI, but quite a few of, of you who have been nominated to be part of these technical panels um, uh, were selected also by FSSAI. Then we have been able to nominate um, uh, quite a few for the FSSCI, CII, SK, FOSTAC training of trainer programs, three of which has been completed in Bangalore, Delhi, as well as in Mumbai. Um, and these uh, 
uh, uh, trainers um, after successful com uh, completion that is after I mean the exams uh, results would be you know uh, coming out very soon uh, they would be qualified as nationally recognized FSSI trainers for food business operate, op operations. Also to independent consultants um, and qualified certification body award assessors. This is a new addition for certification body assessors. We have been able to provide rewarding growth opportunities by the way of paying them an honorarium for each and every assessment that they are doing over and above the two voluntary assessments that they have to do in the beginning of beginning of you know starting the assessment career now uh, the future directions for assessors is like this that uh, we are soon uh, in the process of developing a continuous professional development system the cpd system which is being practiced you know by uh, global certification bodies uh, it is basically that you know uh, there has to be a continuity in your participation as an assessor to qualify as an assessor for the next award program uh, uh, also mandatory participation in award assessments for maintaining the CPD logs so this criteria is under development and once we complete it we will uh, uh, in, keep you informed on, on this particular process. Now the glimpses of the award, uh, very happy to say that uh, our number of applicants, that is the percentage growth has been more than tenfold in the last seven years. So last year we have had you know, more than 10% growth, uh, uh, also like actually not 10%, 10 folds growth as well as uh, for the number of trained assessors it's gone above that it's more it's almost an 11 fold growth in the number of assessors now we have in that pool that pool has about 368 assessors now you know who are qualified and who can go about you know doing assessments the um, levels of the award remain the same that is you know award for the trophy is one which is for outstanding performance one per sector per category per size whereas the certificates are significant achievements strong commitment strong commitment to GHP GMP GWP as well as a letter of appreciation these can be more than one our members of the jury and the awards committee um, uh, these are the people I think most of you would uh, uh, know this because uh, we have been basically repeating the jury panel uh, that is Mr. Ravi Mathur from GS1 under the Ministry of Commerce, Professor Ram Rajeshekharan, Mr. Hariman Bhongal is new, he uh, is the Executive Director of Vimta Laboratories and Dr. Uttam Chatterjee. And in the awards committee we have Mr. Piroz Kambata uh, who is also in our uh, Food Safety and Awards uh, Committee. Uh, he's the CMD of Rasna International and he's been in our food processing committee, he's been the chairman of the food processing committee and he's also in our national council, the CI national council. Now in the award, uh, this is the award model which runs across all the you know category of awards. Uh, this year we have uh, added the sustainability, uh, a point on the sustainability uh, in the change management initiatives um, and we'll show you how what exactly has been added basically um, any enablers that you'll have put in place on sustainability any sustainability initiatives that your that companies are doing you know they can they would actually get some credit points on the change management initiatives if that added that part proud to say that uh, this year we have introduced three new categories if you see the three pink categories that is the primary production dairy the primary production organic uh, that is fruits vegetables and cereals which is number nine and the manufacturing organic which is the criteria number ten so um, at present we have you know ten criteria um, we started way back in 2011 with just three criteria now um, or in 2017 we have 10 criteria uh, this is just a table the table one which each assessor we just uh, you know this table one has been revised so uh, your training program did not have all these 10 categories because these were developed after the last training program so this is the update on the table one so please you know uh, 
go by this if it is a dairy primary production it's criteria number eight primary production organic is number nine and the manufacturing organic is number ten and uh, there is um, uh, one thing we would like to say that you know what is the basis of the primary production dairy it is based on global gap plus social compliance primary production organic now for organic we uh, uh, it it is global gap if you recall you know we all um, we always had primary production which if you see number five that was also based on global gap codex standards the social compliance is also there what we are doing is that we are taking we must take a self declaration on the organic certification also that is going to prove that this is an organic farm and then um, or an organic production there are certain, certain criteria on organic, especially in purchasing, that we have put in um, and also in the primary production, uh, which we have included, and the co-mingling and the cross-contamination. So these are some of the points that have been included in the, in the primary production organic. Please remember that it is food safety that you are assessing, not really the organic certification. So organic certification is by self-declaration, Certain points on organic certainly has to be, uh, you know, verified. But other than that, it is the food safety of the organic. Similar for manufacturing, it is based on FSSE 22000, FSSAR, change management initiative, social compliance, plus the self-declaration on organic manufacture. Uh, this is what I just explained. So it is there in your in your slide also. And we've shared this sli these slides, you know, uh, I think all of you would have uh, received this slide, all these slides before. There is only a change in, in one or two slides, otherwise it remains the same. Uh, on the checkpoints, uh, just to tell you, criteria 3 is only one of the samples. Uh, in your checkpoints, if you find any highlighted yellow sections, it means that you, know, you will have to focus a little bit more on the reporting part of this because uh, uh, it, uh, these are some of the priority points which the jury gives a lot of you know attention to okay look at number four section d change management initiatives if you see this the word sustainability has been included out here uh, same for criteria the this page page slide number 15 the yellow uh, sections are uh, to be you know prioritized with respect to the reporting okay now prior information for a meaningful assessment um, SSS uh, I very well understand you know the challenge that you face first of all the time is too short and you are expected to verify so many things in overall the time that you get on the site is not more than one and three fourth days and in that one and three four days we are asking you to do so much we are asking you to do a maturity assessment where you have to put down strengths opportunities for improvement any blurs deployment results so how do you do this now the next seven eight slides are telling you in details that these are the information you should seek prior to going on site if not you will not be able to make a meaningful assessment the maximum that you can you know accommodate is that you tell them if they don't want to share it with you beforehand they might you must tell them that at the opening meeting these must be handed over let's go to the first one like during email communication before the site visit the senior assessor must ensure that sector specific practices format filled in the application document must be on the basis of the process flow diagram so I will uh, discuss this format in the next few slides the improvement list format if these are shared you can actually get this links from beforehand you can verify it on site and quickly you know copy paste those information that you verified on your findings report then the list of result parameters in the application document format and if not, request that trend data of results must be submitted during the opening meeting. Also, ethicists must insert these results in the appropriate checkpoint. Findings, regulatory list, etc. You will find how 
objective the you know the, the scoring becomes also you will be able to you know convince your next level of evaluator who are the reviewers and the calibrators now this is the sector specific practices format that I was talking about now just see this format in the process step you have process one two two three four so don't miss a step write down all the steps for each of them if the company has identified the technology and the equipment that they use the material of construction that they use the mistake proofing that you know they could have put in place something like a photo sensor you know the, uh, maybe an interlock these kind of mistake proofings then any instrumentation and process controls the auto ejection system etc if this is what they have put down already you know in a in a table format First of all, it is easier for you to understand what sector specific practices they have and when you just go verify it quickly on site, you can copy paste this, you know, in your section C, which is your sector specific format. Now, okay, up to the process steps, it's fine. What generally is missed out is, you know, the coverage of the primary residue control. What do we mean by primary residue control? This is like this, like supposing a company is making a um, a jam, you know, um, say an apple jam. In this case, they would be purchasing the apples and then, you know, the processing is, the jam processing is happening on site at the production site. Now, you as an SSR has pre visited the production site only, but you also need to find out that the apples that they procure, that is the primary product, right? what is the resid the maximum residue limit control measures does the company have on that most of the time when they are purchasing these apples you know they would possibly you know have some kind of uh, some kind of a reporting you know a coa from the from the produce from the supplier another better practice is that when they work say with the farmers you know from it may not be just a, it may not be a contract farming at all but still they work with the farmers training them on you know how uh, providing them with pesticides providing them with you know fertilizers so that uh, the maximum residue limits of the chemicals never go up uh, also on the maintenance of air quality which is number eight Number nine, water treatment technology, ETP, others. So, you know, if you have this information, which you might have to facilitate out, you know, from the, because sometimes these formats are not very, you know, like familiar. Uh, I mean, the, the applicant company may not be familiar or may not understand how to fill in this format. It should, so it, it can then happen that the senior assessor explains, you know, that this is how, you know, you need to fill this in. This will be of great help to you. Uh, for the, say, for the uh, benefit of the assessors, now under the Ages of Ships, which is one of our new initiatives of CII HUL on food safety sciences launched in 2016, we have now uploaded some of the sector specific FSMS guidance documents of bakery, refined edibles, oils and fats, ghee, frozen meat, frozen dead deserts, jams and marmalades. You could go and download from that slide. Uh, uh, first of all, you can, you know, read it from that site. You can also, you know, download these material if these are some of your, you know, sectors that you're going to and uh, we will be adding more to it. So we are in the process of adding more sector specific guidance documents, you know, for the benefit of ethicists as well. Now we come to the second one, another, you know, information which would help you to make a meaningful this thing and you should get it prior. This is on the list of improvement activities. Now you have to ask them that, you know, just list out the improvement activity. What kind of improvement are you going to do? What are the project dates? How many team members are involved and what are the benefits you've got? So if they give you initially a laundry list of all this, again, it will take you a shorter time to verify and also get a loads of information, you know, to put down in your report and you should look for trends also three to five years this is that you know trend um, uh, that you know sheet that you can ask them actually all these are part of the application document but unfortunately the applicant does not fill this up 
So you'll have to help the applicant fill this up. You know, if, uh, once you get the application document, you will have to, because, but of course, we share the application document at the last moment also. That is mainly to, you know, uh, ensure that, you know, once you, once you say yes to the site visit and the site visit dates are fixed, only then we try and, you know, share the application document. So you will receive it at the last moment only. But then, you know, just to ensure that these results, trends, you know, the list of uh, uh, points that we've identified here, if these results can be, you know, shared with you in advance. This is the regulatory excellence check sheet. This also is part of it. You have a, have a look at it. There are about, you know, uh, there are about 17, you know, points there. Okay. The environmental impact, you know, for the last three years, Tick the cub like you know these if this information is available if it's not available they just say that you know we don't take this information no point in insisting you just ask them for it if they have it well and good otherwise you can say that the com the company does not track this information now see it's important how you capture data what is your interview mode XSS I have one request to you please do not be judgmental and please be cooperative, courteous, you know, with them. Never please be arrogant with them. Basically, what are you doing? You are actually representing the unit to the next stage evaluator. So your next stage evaluator is your, you know, calibrator as well as, you know, the reviewer. So you have to mention that to the company. Companies generally take you as, you know, auditors who are going to go and make big possibly. So you'll have to first break that ice and you have to tell them that we are going to represent you. Supposing, you know, you go up to the level of the, the jury shortlists you for the, sorry, the awards committee shortlists you for the, you know, award presentation. Then we will represent you. So you please share all your good points with us. So basically, start by inquiring on their strengths for the particular checkpoint. When you probe deeper on the strength in a very logical manner, the OFIs, that is the opportunities for improvement, if any, should emerge. Please do not have, do a high-handed behavior. No, not, you know, we are not judgmental. We are not gods out there. We are there to capture information from them and present it to the next level of evaluation. That is our purpose as an assessor. Now, when you record the feedback, I, I've shared this also in, you know, in the training programs, that you must give outcome and you must give, you know, enablers. So outcome means what? Results. So trend results, etc. Comparison with benchmarks. Soundness of the approach. Extent of deployment. Review systems. Improvements of enablers. These are what, what should be. Because if you see in a particular reporting format, there are four, you know, columns. First is the serial number. Then is the checkpoint. Third is the yes, no, partially not applicable. And the fourth is the findings. Okay. So the third column, yes, no, partly not applicable, is where you say compliance or not compliant. So it's a yes, no situation, partly situation. Do not write anything more on the compliance. Then you dig further and you write down, you know, how, how well it is deployed across the sectors. What more do they do? What are their review systems? How do they, what kind of improvements have they done on the processes? How sound is the process? So, you know, that is the way you should write it. So basically, when you assess enablers, you remember we speak about that plus sign, you know, the plus sign that we show in blue. Basically, what do you do? You look up, that is right from the top to the bottom, you know, down the line management. You look horizontally from one process to another, from one department to the other, horizontally all processes. And what do you check? You check approach. What is the definition of approach? How do you understand approach? All the five W1H, who, what, when, where, why, how. On the deployment, what do you see? Have they, if they, supposing they are saying, you know, we do improvement projects through, you know, uh, the 5W1H process. So you will see improvement processes are done on the shop floor only or also in their purchasing department, in their stores department, in their, you know, uh, the maintenance department. So look at the deployment across the processes. When you say down the line, you will find generally every organization has a brilliant few who will do all the projects, who will do all the good work. 
So basically, when you see such a thing, when you see some good projects being done, try and see how many people were involved in that project, how many people of which levels were involved in that project. That is going to tell you an approach is deployed down the line, whether it's deployed down the line. For regular measurement also, see how they are measuring their approaches and doing a review of their processes. Now we were saying uh, that probe deep into the strengths in a logical manner and you will get OFIs. Remember I said that just two slides back. How do you do this? First you say, okay, who does this? You're saying, someone says, you know, we have a great uh, process of, you know, say calibration. Then you say, who does it? How is it done? When is it done? How often, etc. Then you see whether the concept of calibration is, you know, there among all the people, you know, so all the people who are concerned with it. So is the quality operator, you know, the or the production operator, does he know about it? Generally, the quality person might know or the person who's measuring with it, does he know about calibration? Because, you know, the ones who are doing the measurements, are they all aware of it? Or is it only the quality manager or that quality, you know, for the poor food safety leader, he only knows about it. So this is how you check the awareness of the process. Now see, I'm speaking about calibration, deployment across the functions and among relevant levels of people. So then you see, okay, calibration, when something goes out of calibration, possibly it goes through the purchase department to the calibrator organization. So you will have to see whether all those people concerned know about the problems, how fast it has to be there, what should be the reporting format, is the variation recorded, are the variations incorporated in the reading? If they say it's a plus minus five, which is very much within calibration, but if it's a minus five difference, is that minus five incorporated in the reading itself? Then you look at target trend, benchmark results, etc., to demonstrate effectiveness. Then you will have to see whether the process of calibration that they follow, is it a best kind of, you know, the process that they are doing. It's not necessary that you have to calibrate everything externally. You can definitely do it to the master gauge, okay, which means, you know, some, in, some in-house uh, instruments are, you know, kind of calibrated, and then these are used as, used as master gauge. So in this case, what is the best practice? How are these master gauges, you know, preserved? How are they stored? How do they, you know, utilize it? How often, what happens when, you know, it goes out of calibration? So then you see the best practices that is there. So this is how we are saying that if you probe deep enough, you will find very value-adding OFIs, which you can point out to the company. Now, we keep on saying, you know, uh, yes, targets you have to, uh, you have to measure, trends you have to measure, comparison with best in class. Results cover all relevant areas. Much easier said than done. Let us understand how do we, you know, do comparisons with best in class. The first question that comes to your, to your mind is that, do I know what is best in class? Sometimes you may not. We've just started, you know, this, uh, uh, kind of putting, uh, putting up on the SHIFT's website the FSMS guidance documents, you know, with some good practices also in it. But you may, even with a lot of homework, you may or may not know what is the best in class practice. So there is a method of, you know, assessing best in class practices. Now, it is like this. You have to go and ask the unit how they compare, you know, how this unit Say on, on a particular aspect, say like uh, it is on uh, uh, breakdowns, okay? So you can say on breakdowns, how do you compare with other units of your organization? Well, if that's applicable. So they say, see, we had an overall equipment effectiveness we measure. And on the overall equipment eff uh, effectiveness, we are, you know, uh, we have five other units in India and we are the first. See, this is the report we have. So you should always remember, Anyone who claims we are the best must have results to show that we are the best. If in higher secondary, in the board exams, someone is claimed as to be first, everyone knows how much the person has scored and how much the next other people have scored also in order to know that that person has stood first, right? Only then it is a validated benchmark. So anyone who's claiming that I am the best must also have results to validate on that particular aspect that they are the best. So for that, they have to track results. 
So anyone which is comparing, now you tell me there is a situation 1, a situation 2 and a situation 3 of the slide. So compares with Indian industry and shows evidence of achievement. Which is better, 2 or 1? Obviously 2. Now there is another company which is able to show you, you know, results which they have compared with global benchmarks and has shown evidence of achievement. Now, we certainly know that 3 is world class, 2 is a little less than that, 1 is a little less than that. This is how you have to assess maturity on benchmarking. This is one of the very objective ways of doing a maturity assessment on benchmarking. Now, examples of results linked to subsections. We have been screaming from the rooftop saying that please ring your results to the subsections. But because we did not see too many of you, uh, quite a few have, of you have been doing it, but some of you have not been able to do it. So what we did was that this year we provided some ready reckoners. Now, what are these ready reckoners? The moment you see, a, this is a trend result parameters and findings. When you see that there is a section in the prerequisite program on equipment suitability and maintenance, right? So on that, if you put down results on breakdown, overall equipment effectiveness, mean time between you know, failures, uh, mean time to repair, if you do that, you know, if, if, the, if the company can give you some trends on this and if you put it down on, in this section in the findings column, you would get a very good idea about, you know, an indicator, a part indicator of their equipment suitability and mint on their at least an equipment maintenance part of it. Customer satisfaction. See, when we are saying customer satisfaction, most of us would be very comfortable writing down the procedure that they have written in the manual. We are not expecting you to do that. You can take out one or two points from the manual, certainly, but along with that would be the enablers part of it. A procedure is generally an enabler only. But for the result, what do you put? You put customer satisfaction indices, segmented customer complaints, return products. If you can put some of these trends, you yourself will know how objective you are becoming, you know, in assessing customer satisfaction. Similarly, for rework, it can be reduction of rework percentage, reject, scrap percentage, Kaizen projects. For improvement in FSMS, you can put down, you know, project examples how they have upgraded their FSMS, possibly from, you know, a HACCP to ISO 22000, ISO 22000 to FSSC 22000. These are all upgradation of the FSMS. Someone does, you know, uh, a BRC, which is quality and food safety put together. So, you know, you, you can put up these also examples. So, basically, your, you know, findings column should be full of examples and, and results uh, demonstrating enablers as well as results. For process control, what all can you put? You can put work in process test test results that yes, test and you just look at a few samples, you know, and you say yes, test results of the, uh, the finished goods um, of uh, say raw material were found to be in, in compliance. So just put that, you don't have to put down the exact results. You just have to verify those results as per the range and then you have to say yes, test results were found compliant in the sample that was checked. So you write down the extent of compliance. That is the result we are wanting from you. We please refrain from writing procedure number, document number, record number. We don't want all that. That does not add any value to the maturity of the system. For purchasing similarly, supplier reject and rework percentage trends, no stockout situations. So similarly, for warehousing, for corrective action, for utilities, for reward recognition, we have put all this down. Uh, uh, SSS, in SSS, I would recommend you carry this, you know, along with you so that, you know, you use these uh, a few sheets as a ready reckoner and, you know, when you're doing the assessment, you can, you know, ask for these information and you can quickly put down these information in those particular sections and you yourself will understand how you are enriching your report writing. Okay. When assessing and reporting corrective actions, huh? most of the time, again, we find that, yes, you know, the, the assessor is writing about, you know, they have a corrective action procedure. They do a root cause analysis. That's fine. But how many examples are there of using root cause approach? What kind of root cause approaches are they using? Are they using a YY analysis? Are they using a problem solving process? Are they using a lean six sigma? What is it? You know, and in how many cases have you seen the use of this? 
Okay. Also, what kind of mistake proofing have they done? You know, to their uh, to their uh, corrective actions. For a, a, example, have they you know put in auto ejection systems of you know labels which are wrong? They get auto ejected out. So this would be a mistake proofing which they have put in place. These are some some of the high level corrective actions that a com company can take. Also, a corrective action must include the training of the concerned people. You have to see whether it's prevented recurrence which I think most of you do it and also example of sustainable improvements to the corrective actions. We now come to the award assessment process. Uh, it remains the same. Uh, there is no change in this award assessment process. Um, key dates I think you all know May 31st was the last date but uh, still some are trickling but with special permissions uh, so we are still getting some uh, some assessments I mean you know award applications uh, now and uh, we will send out a fresh you know a set of communications uh, to to assessors once again um, you most of you would have already received the first communication by now okay uh, so that is how and it is important that uh, the application document comes to us on time we will send it to you only after you fix up your site visit dates which has to be completed by August 31st and awards committee and jury meetings are will be completed by early November October is the awards committee meeting so before that you know if everything has to be completed and then award announcement is December and within 10 days of the awards night we dispatch the feedback reports now this is something which is very important to all you assessors see most of the time when I send out the first communication to assessors which most of you would have received by now uh, first communication to assessors on preliminary teams you know, sometimes many of you are questioning me as to when will be the assessment dates now please remember this is the way as I mean it we don't fix up CII does not fix up the award assessment dates the process is like this see we are, uh, we will send you the first communication which is identified and read as a first communication after that there will be some interim this thing then we will send out a second communication where you know, because now some people are confirming some people are saying I have a conflict of interest I can't do it some people are saying we've moved out you know we are now overseas we can't do it some are already saying yes we can do it so you know that process is going on now so uh, the teams that we have sent you are not the confirmed teams. After this, we'll send you a second communication, which will be a more or less a modified and a confirmed team. It is only after the second communication that, you know, the first communication to the applicant goes back to informing him about the confirmed senior assessor only. So remember, the first communication to the applicant will go. Before that, the senior assessor must not get in touch with the applicant company because there are still changes happening okay when we send that communication to the applicant we will keep the senior assessor in the copy so the senior assessor will know when the information to the applicant company has gone and only from then onwards the senior assessor can start speaking to the company on you know what could be the possible dates we request you not to push it to August please because there are many of you who are calibrators who's doing multiple assessments in that case it becomes very difficult you know to manage assessments moreover please also remember companies who are pushing the dates to August are the companies who are not really prepared so that also you know I think the assessors can make out that uh, there can be some stage ma uh, stage managed shows you know otherwise basically you know uh, good assessments take place through a surprise visit but since this is an award assessment, we cannot do a surprise visit. But who knows what happens later. Okay. Then comes the third communication, which CII will send to the senior assessor only. This third communication will call, will have the application document. It will have it will have the application document. It will have the opening meeting assessment formats. So this third communication is for, forwarded by the senior assessor to his team members only after the site visit dates are finalized so uh, please you know remember these points several interim communications may also take place in between with the CII and the senior assessor uh, but those will be you know like they will not be marked as a third communication they are all interim communications so please look out for three communications marked okay now comes the site visit date finalizer. I, I think I've just explained this whole process to you it's 
now you know what i decided to do was that you know i actually put this in the in the slide uh, so that you all would also remember the the implication of a first communication second communication and a third communication okay now comes the reporting of findings for each checkpoints uh, bullet points are allowed but make the bullet points self, self explanatory on strengths and ofis or you can write textual also, but remember if you write textual uh, notes, some of you can write it very well. It's very good if you write textual you know, findings, but in a textual finding you have to be grammatically correct, no spelling mistakes. In bullet points also that's required, but in a textual the probability of error goes out, goes up. But definitely textual is a good form, but bullet points are also accepted. Do not write procedure numbers, record numbers. Add the result friends in your findings wherever applicable to justify your scores. Please remember your names are all written in the feedback report. So it is also very easy for us to evaluate you as an assessor. Remember we said so we are asked for so many nominations, you know, to be a faculty, to be a national resource person of FSSA, etc. They all come back because we are an industry body. We are a confederation of the Indian industry. So, you know, all the government agency bodies, etc., they will come back to us to ask for, you know, uh, nominations as well as, you know, uh, taking our opinions on who are the good, uh, who are the ones who are really, you know, competent, etc. So these are the ways, you know, seeing your reports, the way you've performed in the assessments, these are the ways we can also, you know, evaluate this performance. I have, I'm not going to go through this, but here if you see, you know, this is the way, you know, this is one of the more or less good findings, you know, which was written there. If you see, there is the, the third column is yes, 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 etc. There is one partly. And then, you know, uh, uh, on the on the final, on the strengths and the OFIs on enablers and results, you know, it's written down very well. If you see, they are all additional information that is given, you know, related. It doesn't have to answer that question only. Please remember the checkpoints are just guidelines. They are not to be answered just, you know, it's not a requirement. It's a guideline. The more uh, the company addresses it, you know, on a global benchmark level, the maturity of it goes up. You know, so that is what you need to write. Okay, so for product information, consumer awareness, this is what you all can go through this later on. Once again, you know, so these are some of the uh, quite good, you know, finding reports. Okay, I, on the code of conduct, I think uh, you all, this is just a refresher, formal appropriateness, adapt to the applicant's culture, no gifts, re, do not request for any flavors outside the logistics, must use evenings for processing, the consensus feedback reporting and the scoring. Now, there is one point I have to bring to your attention. See, uh, sometimes we do share with the senior assessor the last year's reports, you know, because based on the jury recommendations only. If there are repeat applications, we are supposed to share the last year's, uh, uh, you know, report with the, with the senior assessor. So never, you know, please do not copy paste previous findings. It can be a terrible, you know, it can be a terrible show if that kind of a thing is done. So please do not copy paste previous findings and moreover do not use earlier versions you know of the model every year the version changes. So if you have if you are doing reports on an older version everything will go wrong. Checkpoints will be missed out. There are inclusions. So please do not use old formats. Use this year's formats only. The key attributes of a CISSR no matter what your findings, never ridicule the SSC unit. One point, the second point is, do not be arrogant, do not be judgmental, and I'm going to add to it, do not get angry, have a lot of patience. You must be polite, you must be courteous, you must be sensitive to the applicant's queries, needs and challenges. Please remember that the applicant may not have gone through a course like this, to them, the concept of maturity assessment must be could be absolutely new. So sometimes when you're asking them questions beyond compliance, they can, you know, retort back to you. You should hold your patience and please explain it properly. See, it has to be, you know, very, very mutual and very, very courteous. Do not copy classified information like menus, recipes, etc. Now for the side visit. Uh, we have discussed the site visit, you know, in details. I think all of you would know. Uh, 
go through it, but the two points I want to highlight here is that you must have the highest focus on verification of PRP implements, practices, good sector specific you know, uh, practices, as well as awareness of all food handles. That's very important. Do not focus on documentation only. Yes, some mandatory documentations of course is required. So, you know, no way should the, should the uh, you know, the unit feel that you are focusing on documentation only. That is for compliance audits, but here, look more at the practice, the implementation, the awareness of the people, the culture, basically, you know, and how well PRP is being, you know, being implemented out there. Okay. The role of the senior assessor, the role of the senior assessor, he must guide the team also, you know, to write. Because, you know, right from the first evening uh, of assessment must guide the team members on how to, you know, write down the findings, see one finding that they have written and see whether it's okay or not, whether it includes all the elements. Everybody must create, uh, carry a laptop and uh, uh, every, everybody must work in the evenings. He also, the senior assessor leads the opening meeting and closing meeting, liaisons with CII facilitates a consensus meeting on day four, ensures appropriateness of the articulated findings, scoring and the score summary, sharing the complete report with the team members. It must be shared with the team members before they leave. We too from CII, after the calibration, review, etc., whatever changes have been made, when we share the final report after the awards night with the uh, applicant company, we mark a copy to the assessors. Okay, prepare jury presentations if shortlisted and make a jury presentation to the jury. The role of the assessor is, you know, broadly the same, only you know, he is part of the team. A uh, lot of background has to be done, work has to be done by him. Uh, and the rest of it would be the same, interacts with the senior assessor as required and modifies the report during the second phase of the assessment. See, it so happens that after you come back from the site visit, uh, there are queries which are raised by the next levels of reviewers. Uh, please do not, you know, take offense on that. It is just that the next level of uh, evaluators will have to compare uh, the findings, you know, with other similar companies, same sector companies, and they might have questions which they might ask you, and the senior assessor gets in touch with the, you know, team of assessors too answer those queries. For the opening meeting, we will share a PowerPoint presentation with you. You know, this year's PowerPoint presentation, we've done it for the last three years. So this year also, we will share the updated version with all of you. See, there is an appeal system which the senior assessor makes it clear during the opening meeting. It is like this, that the applicant company can raise any complaints. So the senior assessor has to tell them, you know, at the opening meeting that you can raise any complaints in that case, the CIS awards committee is responsible for resolving them, uh, while the decision of the jury on the recognition of applicant companies will be final. The company can send their complaints to the CII awards committee for any of the following reasons, and they can actually, you know, get in touch with CII. Now, uh, you can ask the you know applicant company during the opening meeting to share the soft copy of the presentation that they've made. Um, it is better that they share an editable copy, but if they, st and you can also tell them that, you know, you can share best practices, photos, etc., which we can present to the jury if shortlisted. But if they are not comfortable, please do not insist on that. There may be, you know, their policy not to share it. Now there are some frequently asked questions by the applicants, which you would be, you know, you should gear up for answering those. One question is that we have international certification. Why are we being asked about aspects where compliance is not a requirement at all? So in that case, what do you say? You explain about the maturity assessment aspect. Okay, another question. Why don't you share names, number of applications you have received? While some of you have been saying that CI does not share it with us, which is true. Uh, but you also have to tell them that this is in the best interests of the industry, of his own company. There is a confidentiality because supposing in case they don't win any recognition, then it might send a wrong signal to his customer, to the company's customers, as well as, you know, the competitors, that this is not a safe food producing company. We don't want that to happen because that's not the case at all. Uh, okay. 
we obtained, then someone will tell you, you know, we obtained significant achievement two years back, but even with a lot of improvement, etc., we received a lower recognition last year. So how does this happen? So you will have to say that, you know, the awards committee, the jury, and other participating industries are going on raising their bars every year. So if you've just addressed OFIs, it is, I mean, quite likely that, you know, you will, you may not get anything also next year. You have to and not only address your OFIs of last year, but you also have to show significant improvement over last year to match with the improvements that other companies are doing. Okay, the closing meeting is anything between 30 to 45, 50 minutes, chaired by the senior assessor. In this meeting, tell them all the OFIs that they have had. You know, in the closing meeting, please do not give them the impression that they have been fantastic, because please remember, even if you think they have been very good with comparison, they may not be the best. So don't give them any wrong impressions because you have to tell them about the four stages of assessment. Never make a PowerPoint presentation. Never give them any reports, written reports from the assessor teams at this stage. Scores cannot be mentioned at this stage. Remember the consensus meeting is happening after the closing meeting. It is on the last day. You finish with the closing meeting give them an overview of all the OFIs and their strengths and then you come away and then you do the consensus reporting. So you have to give individual scores, consensus scores, total scores, also upgraded or downgraded but they could be upgraded or downgraded on the findings recorded by the assessors. You also have to complete the executive summary. A good senior assessor will complete all this on the last day of the consensus meeting. Uh, Executive summary is basically read by the jury and the top management of the applicant company. You must restrict it to three to four pages. And these are what has to be, you know, uh, uh, put down. But what I've put in red is that while all of you are putting down all this, the team recommendation is sometimes, you know, not put in by the, as, by the senior assessor in discussion with the team members. Please put the team recognition. There is a slot in it in your assessment format, saying whether it's fit for an outstanding. So just put that, put your recommendation down. We'll see, you know, we, we'll, we'll consider that. We'll put that up to the jury and let the jury take a call, you know, after comparing with others what they should do. Uh, the, uh, if there are, uh, look at the last point, the others are standard points. Look at the last point, a separate sheet on any unresolved opinions on scores difference of not more than 10 and justifications can be attached if there has been a problem. Uh, the site visit planning, uh, as I said once again, I would like to draw your attention on the walk around the plant. Uh, many a time we find that, you know, uh, assessors have come back to us and said, you know, it was like a four acre plant. So how do you finish in one and a half hours? In that case, please ask for a vehicle. Um, the basically the object please understand the first of the first of all the objective of the walk around the plant you don't get any OFIs or strengths out there you don't get to probe there what you do is that you just understand the process layout that is what what is where and what is the process layout that is objective later on please come back for the detailed scoring if you waste time here later on you will not have time for deep probing huh? so it is please do not take more than one and a half hours no matter how big if it's big, ask for a vehicle to go around it. Okay, then this is, uh, I think, evening work, as I said already. And uh, this is also a typical, you know, award. We are trying to put four people in a large sector and three assessors in a small and medium sector. Uh, we will try to put some local assessors, but please remember we also have to ensure the quality of the assessors. We have to give a mixed team. So sometimes it's not in our hands to give local assessors. We don't have so many local assessors. So um, I think we, uh, if you are an applicant company as well, uh, it is for you, I would request you to please understand, you know, that challenge that we always have. So this is the side visit then the assessment day I mean before doing the assessment there must be a little bit of a briefing meeting you know within yourselves and uh, this assessment scope uh, do not ask for ask you know for any samples to be laboratory tested please take their samples you know which has already been tested and we put that disclaimer down in the report itself 
For feedback and registration of assessors, uh, it's important. See, this is the basis on which we select you, you know, to be the, the assessors. There are about, you know, nine criteria that we have to look at when we select assessors for a particular unit. So, you know, the fulfillment of this nine criteria is important. So, if some of you have not yet, you know, received an, uh, received an invitation. It's possibly because you missed out on the extent to, of exposure or, you know, because there, was, there were probably others who fulfilled this nine criteria more than you did. Please send your updated CVs in the specified template, you know, that is, uh, I think one spe specified template was sent by Saurav Agarwal to you. If you haven't, please send it. It's very important for us. Uh, also, uh, just to reiterate, independent consultants who are not in the payroll of any company are being provided with an honorarium per assessment uh, as per the CI stipulated rates, uh, and uh, we also pay for that travel and stay. Travel and stay is paid for by the company for everybody, basically all assessors. But it is honorariums are given only to independent consult food professionals, freelance consultants who are not in the payroll of any organization. So with this, uh, we've completed uh, the the webinar, and I would now request you to you know please uh, uh, put your questions in the question box and. Uh, Yes, uh, please put your questions in the question box and I will answer it one by one.